Laney. This is my Camino Norte packing list for summertime. We walked from Eru to Santiago and then we continued to Finisterre and Musia. This was about 45 days of walking. We went very slowly. It can easily be done a little bit faster. I used my Osprey 24 liter backpack. It's about five or six years old. Use this for many trips before, including the Camino Frances two years ago. I love this bag because it has a full frame and therefore it stays away from my body. So it allows for nice airflow, very comfortable. It's a size extra small, so it fits me with the straps right on my waist. So all the weight sits on my hip. I used a 24 liter backpack to purposely restrict how much stuff I could bring. This looks like a lot, but it actually packs up really small. I think when people start to use 40 liter bags, 60 liter bags, way too much stuff, your backpack is gonna be really heavy. And then the more weight you carry, the more your joints are gonna hurt, the more likely you're gonna get tendonitis as you walk. So really common problem on the Camino. What I'm wearing right now is my hiking outfit, what I wore every single day on the trip. I have a wool t-shirt, this is from Icebreaker, really lightweight merino so it doesn't smell as much. I have a sports bra, this one's from Nike, it has no cups so that it dries faster when I'm doing laundry. I'm wearing my Patagonia running shorts. I personally like the running shorts because they have a underwear liner inside so I didn't need to wear underwear if it was a really hot day they already use underwear in the shorts. I'm wearing a buff on my neck sometimes I would use it on my head I would wet this when it was hot every time I washed my face it would turn into a hairband. For shoes I have my zero shoes these are a minimalist barefoot footwear 1000 kilometers and they're really ripped up tons of wear on the bottom. I chose a low top shoe and something really lightweight because my last Camino I had a really big boot and they were just too heavy. However, I think for the Norte route, I would have preferred something with a little bit more of a high top for all the steep hills. My toes kept hitting the end of the shoe on the downhill and they're really steep downhills. Honestly, your shoe wear is your personal choice of what you like. These shoes were comfortable, totally did the job. If I was to do the Norte again, or maybe the Primitivo, I would have chosen like a very lightweight high top. I wore two pairs of socks the whole time. I have my wool darn tufts. I also have my wool farm to feet socks. One of these pairs was being worn. One of them was being packed. Talk about that in a minute. I also have my sock liners. These are from REI. They're silk sock liners. I use these so that I don't get blisters on my feet. They took a beating. <laughs> they dry really quickly, so I only brought one pair. I wore them every single day day and I washed them almost every single day. Every day on the Camino I did laundry so every day it was okay to wear the same thing. Everything else fit inside a packing cube. I chose a packing cube to organize my bag, make sure I always had my things. You can use any kind of organization system such as a dry bag would be a good idea or even Ziploc bags. We are on the Camino a long time. I already had this Tortuga packing cube, so I used this. The square shape is a little awkward to pack in my small backpack, it still works. Inside my packing cube, I have my socks. I have one spare sports bra. This one was icebreaker and it's wool. I use this for when I'm in the city. I have two pairs of underwear. These are both from Ex Officio. You can wear them over and over again. They dry super fast. I have my Patagonia pants, which I wore pretty much every day once we got to our albergues or pensions. I have one spare t-shirt. This is from Unbound. It's 100% merino wool, black, v-neck. I wore this when I was sleeping and almost every day when I was in the city. Never ever wore this hiking. 
I did bring one extra tank top. I did not need to bring a tank top, but it was nice to have an option when the day was really hot and we got into the cities or our albergues really early and I wanted to wear something that uh, I wasn't sleeping in. And so this is my tank top from Icebreaker. It's 100% wool. I brought one sweater on this trip. This is my Icebreaker Merino wool, really versatile, zip up, thumb holes. You need a sweater, especially on the Norte, because it gets very cold at night. The temperature fluctuates between the day and nighttime. I wore it literally every day, except for the two days of our heat wave. In addition, Galicia, where Santiago is located, rains all the time. I'm in Santiago right now. It is raining today really hard. It rained all day yesterday in Santiago. Therefore, bring one sweater. A slightly unnecessary item I brought was a pair of leggings. I think if I was to do another summer Camino instead of leggings, I would have brought maybe a very small sundress just to have one more option. But really, you don't need more than that. You have your day clothes, you have your night clothes, and maybe one second option for night clothes. But don't bring more than that. I brought a swimsuit because Norte were on the beaches. There was an albergue with a pool, used it there. I didn't need this. I could have swam in my underwear, but it's nice to have a swimsuit as an option and it's tiny, so not a big deal. Brought that in my packing queue. I'm gonna zip this up because this is what I actually packed in the cube. Notice how easily it all fits. And if I was wearing the pants and packing the shorts, this would pack even easier. I had one long sleeve t-shirt. This one is from REI. I used this long sleeve button up shirt for the sunshine or in the morning if we were hiking and it was a little foggy. I also get eaten by mosquitoes really easily. I wore this a lot at dinners and even lunches sometimes. So this shirt was never in the packing cube because it was easier to pull out of my backpack at any moment. I have one rain jacket. This is from Patagonia. It's been lasting me four or five years. Still looks great. Rain jacket, invaluable for the Norte, which rains, and for Galicia. I wore this hat every day on the Camino. Okay, yes, it looks ridiculous. No, I did not use this part because it was too hot. <laughs> I overheat really easily, so I often snapped it off, took it off. This was always just in the bottom of my backpack. I didn't need it because this hat was just hot. I needed the ventilation, so I put a safety pin on it. And I love the big brim though, covers my face, use it in the rain ah, with my hood, rain stays off my face. The best thing I love about this hat specifically though, which is from Sunday afternoons, is that it folds in half flat. So that this hat always, always lived on the side pocket of my backpack. That side pocket of my backpack, I could just grab it whenever I wanted. I packed the sarong, which turned out to be one of the most valuable things I brought, and I was very surprised by that. I was thinking it would be a beach towel or just to lay out on the beach, super useful for that. But in addition, I ended up using it as my actual towel for showering maybe half of the days because my actual towel for showering was this tiny little thing. <laughs> I chose to bring a washcloth. This is from REI. It's a tiny little instant travel towel. It dries so quickly, but when you're wiping yourself off, you kind of have to do like a washcloth and then wring it out. This towel is light. It's cheap, but it's a little bit too minimalist for future Caminos. It worked great if I was packing in an even smaller bag. Most of the time, if you're staying in private albergues or pensions, they do provide you with a towel. So a small towel is not a deal breaker because you're not actually gonna use it every day unless you're planning to stay in the municipal albergues, which are cheaper, but don't have as many amenities. Okay, so my toiletries, what I brought was one bar of soap. You can see for 45 days, I still have a lot of bar of soap. This is a Dr. Bronner's bar. That way, if I really needed to wash my clothes with it, I could. I didn't need to because we brought laundry detergent, which we bought, 
This is a small bottle that I took for free because someone left it behind. It was in a bigger bottle. Bigger bottle fit in my backpack. It was one euro detergent, buy it in Spain. Soap in a plastic bag. Face soap also in a plastic bag. Kind of messy, not great, but both of these I would just leave open under my bunk bed so that they would dry overnight. And then I would just pack it in the morning when it was a dry bag. My small face soap is from Ethnique. It's just a bar of facial soap. So I could put that in my toiletry bag. Also in my toiletry bag, one comb, tooth powder, tiny toothbrush, face moisturizer, which is a solid bar. Just scoop it out, put it on my face. It's also from Ethnique. That way I don't have the risk of an oil or a cream messing up my whole bag. Uh, I put my deodorant into this tin. It's a natural deodorant. Always take things that are in big containers, put them in smaller containers. I have one chapstick that I like to use at night. That is all my toiletries. I brought two things of sunscreen. I have my absolute favorite tin of all time. It's called All Good. It's zinc sunscreen. It's made in California. After six weeks of use, I still have a lot left. I always use this on my neck and my chest and sometimes on my face. I don't use this on my whole body, it's just a little harder to spread on your arms, but ultimately we brought a bigger package of sunscreen that we bought in Spain. I always keep this in the little side pocket so it's handy all the time. I have my face sunscreen, different than my other sunscreen. It's also a zinc. This one is from Badger. It is tinted so that my face isn't pure pasty white with zinc. I have a little container of Advil, which we would buy some and refill this with. But essentially, if you have aches and pains on the road, a little anti-inflammatory is a good thing to help keep you going when you're walking, walking, walking. The rest of my first aid kit, I have my mosquito spray. I bought this in Spain after I got eaten alive. So many mosquitoes in albergues. Spain doesn't believe in screens on their windows. If you are a person like me that mosquitoes love, buy some mosquito spray in Spain. My first aid kit is in this really ugly plastic Ziploc bag that is super broken because I think I used it last time. Maybe put this in a nicer case. But this still does the trick. Ultimately, the most useful things in here was my um, allergy medicine, Benadryl. I needed that for allergies, essentially. Neosporin, good for any time you have a blister, you don't want it to get infected. Anti-itch stick, very, very useful. Um, speaking of blisters, the most important thing in this is my lamb's wool. This is the bit that is not used. Lamb's wool is my favorite thing. Learned about it from people I met on the Camino last time, you just cut a little bit off, stick it in your sock or right against your skin and the natural lanolin in the wool will help prevent more friction. So, and I just kept reusing the pieces over and over and over again. I only have a little bit left over, but it weighs literally nothing. In my first aid kit, the rest of it is just uh, other few blister pieces that I didn't really use, such as band-aids. I have some KT tape, uh, kinesiology tape in case I had tendonitis such as I did last time. Didn't need it. In addition to some extra laundry soap. I have some spare tampons as well. 45 days of walking, you're going to be dealing with your menstruation. And I ended up using my menstrual cup the whole time. Really nice to have something that was reusable and that I wasn't throwing garbage out. Okay, so I also brought one hairbrush. Didn't really need it since I had a comb, but it was nice to be able to brush my hair out since I don't wash my hair with shampoo. Helps spread out the oils. The Norte has long stretches of just nowhere to stop, so you have to bring food with you. Fork. I also have my sunscreen chapstick, which I would wear all the time, and I have hand soap flakes. Spanish. Bathrooms do not always have soap. And albergues are never guaranteed to have soap. In fact, they mostly don't have soap. So I kept this hand soap flakes and my chapstick with sunscreen in my fanny pack. 
always, always on me. This is my Patagonia fanny pack. It's a little dirty, but I use it all the time. All my valuables are in this fanny pack at all times on my body. The most valuable thing that I have personally is my hearing aids. Most of you won't have this problem, but I always had the, my hearing aids since I don't walk with them in. I always had them in this case in my fanny pack. A few other gear pieces for my hearing aids. I have a little dehumidifier, so at night, pop them in there, put this in my fanny pack. Fanny pack goes in my sleeping sack at night. Talk about that in a moment. Last thing for my hearing aids was I have a little case with some extra batteries, just tiny, just a few. I knew it was only gonna be wearing my hearing aids in the evening and at night, so I didn't need a bunch of batteries. I think I only brought 12 extra batteries. I didn't even use them all. Fanny pack, other things in my fanny pack was my wallet, tiny little wallet, money, cards, my actual driver's license is in here, always on my body. I also kept my passport in a plastic Ziploc bag. This was always on my body as well. I have my Pilgrim's credentials with the stamps so that I could stay in the albergues and sometimes you're walking and you see a really cool stamp you want. So this is always on my body as well. My cell phone, this always stays in my fanny pack at all times or in my hands. Valuables, these things stayed on my body at all times. At night, I kept this fanny pack in my sleeping sack next to me, inside. So if you're worried about security, sleep with your valuables. I used a cocoon sleep sack it got a little bit chilly in the mornings around 4 a.m., 5 a.m., but most albergues have blankets, so you just use the extra blanket on top of your sleep sack. In summertime, you do not need a sleeping bag, just a small little sleep sack does the trick. Every night, people turn lights on. Their sun is coming up. Sun goes down really late in summertime, so it's really important to find a comfortable eye mask. I like this one, it's from REI, it's puffy, and Sean painted it for me. Don't forget an eye mask. Electronics, I brought one pair of Bluetooth headphones, one extra external battery for charger for my phone. This is a travel card, really small, really thin. All the cables are included. It doesn't hold a full charge for my phone, but it does the trick if I really need to up the charge for to get through the day. Cable for charging charging. I also have my notebook where and a tiny pen because I like to write down everything that happens every day. Just bring a small one. This is the only paper I have to write. We did not use a book for a guidebook. I used an app on my phone. There's tons of them in the app store. You don't need to carry a book if you're on a route that's really well traveled such as the Frances, the Norte, the Portuguese. No reason to have a physical book unless you actually want to thumb through that. It's nice, not necessary. I have a little shopping bag, which they give you in a lot of the albergues for free. Ended up using this in the grocery stores. Honestly, if you wanted a sturdier one, just bring your own reusable shopping bag. Really nice. Spain, they charge you for bags in the grocery stores. It's only five cents, not a lot, but it's a really nice incentive to bring your own bag. Plus it's eco-friendly. I have a pair of sunglasses, Arnica paste, which I put in this jar because it was smaller than the original bottle. This is called Penetrex. It smells really nice, feels really good to give yourself a massage at the end of the day. I also brought my little prickle ball. This is from Rubs. Really nice to give yourself a nice foot massage or on your calves. You're walking all day, all the time. You have to do some things of self-care or you're going to have tendinitis. I also brought a foam roller water bottle for that. This was a little redundant, but we used this so much between me and my boyfriend and my friends. Foam roller water bottle, a little bulky, but I always was able to carry water with me to restaurants in the evening because my other water was a camel bag, which is just, you can't carry this around outside your backpack. It takes a ton of space in my bag when it's full, but to me it's worth it because I like the convenience of the hose. Again, that's a personal choice. I have my rain fly, came with the backpack. I have my hiking poles. I love hiking poles. My advice, 
buy nice ones. These are crappy ones. They're taped. The tips fell off. I can't get the, the rubber part off because the metal tip broke and then the plastic part ground through. So thank goodness that happened on the third to last day. Hiking poles save you from tendinitis. Get some poles. You'll look dumb for one day and then you realize that you're the coolest person on the road because you're just choop, 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 choop walking. The last thing I would pack every single day and because it was the last thing I would take off before I put my boots on or my sandals, I have these Crocs. I'm not a Crocs person, but these sandals change my life. They dry instantly after the shower because they're so lightweight. There's no fabric on them to absorb water. And these are on their second Camino. This is second Camino sandals. I would clip these to the outside of my backpack. They do fit inside, but I chose to clip them because they were the first and the last thing I would use every day. As soon as you get to the albergue, shoes come off, sandals go on. I have a few items that I packed that I didn't use at all or barely at all. They're superfluous. I wanted to show them because they were in my bag. I have a lock. Don't bring it. All your valuables are in your fanny pack with you at all times. The albergues that have lockers, they have keys and locks on them. Don't bring it, it's heavy. I brought a resistance band that I, honestly, I use this a lot more last Camino. I would use it to string on my bunk bed and use as a drying rack. If, the, if it was raining outside and I couldn't dry my clothes outside, but I didn't really need it this time. I thought I would use it for stretching. I, nope, don't bring it. There's plenty of clotheslines at the albergues. I brought a headlamp. In summertime, it gets dark at 10 o'clock, 10.30. You don't need a headlamp. And if you're hiking at 5 a.m., why? Why are you walking in the dark? <laughs> Therefore, don't bring it. It was heavy in the batteries, but I like this headlamp and it's nice. So I didn't get rid of it. I just carried it around the whole time. I used it one night when we walked back from the lighthouse in Fistera. The last item that I brought that I didn't need, but I used a lot was a second buff. This one is a merino wool. I get cold all the time. So I brought the extra buff so that I wore every night on the Norte, especially. It was really cold at night. For me, if you are not a person who gets very cold, you don't need it. I still have this buff. I probably could have gone without this, but I like it and it's small. It wasn't a deal breaker in my bag. Not necessary. All right, I'm gonna pack my backpack now so you can see how this all fits inside with space for food. This was my life for 45 days. I didn't need anything more than this. You're walking through cities, you're walking through towns. If you really need something more, you can buy it really easily. Enjoy your Camino and Buen Camino. <laughs>